Namaskar. Today's module will talk about some practical tips for an effective and engaging classroom teaching. Children blossom in a conducive educational environment. So, if our students are not being able to follow what we desire to teach them, it is time to introspect into our pedagogies. Naturally, we must first understand the term pedagogy. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it as the art, science and profession of teaching. Put simply, it is the method of teaching. It involves an educator's teaching beliefs, understanding and culture and different learning styles. The era of technology is underway. To avoid redundancy of the educational practices in prevalence, the National Education Policy or NEP 2020 has advocated several important changes. The key principles of NEP 2020 that we shall focus on today are recognizing, identifying and promoting each student's individual skills, advocating flexibility, allowing students to choose their own pathways and finally promoting multidisciplinary and comprehensive education. The National Curriculum Framework for School Education, the NCF, is developed based on the vision of the NEP with the aim to enable its implementation. The NCF brings to life the commitments of the NEP. The basic principles of pedagogy for a conducive learning environment as cited by the NCF 2023 are children are natural learners. Every child given the right environment is capable of learning. Learning is an active process. It involves both learning and doing. Children learn best when they are valued and involved in the process. Children learn in a variety of ways through listening, speaking, reading, writing, doing, discussing, exploring and experimenting. And finally, regular practice is an integral part of effective learning. For any model to work, proper planning is essential. NCF 2023 proposes the Panchadi or the five-step learning process. It can be remembered through an easy acronym ABAPP. Now, what does that stand for? Aditi, Bodh, Abhyas, Prayog and Prasar. Let us understand each term very clearly. Aditi or introduction. When a new concept is introduced, always link it to previous knowledge. For example, in order to introduce the concept of tenses, talk about verbs or doing words. Any work done is always related to time. Proceed to tenses from this juncture. Next is both or conceptual understanding. Encourage students to understand core concepts through play, inquiry, discussion and experiments. For example, an effective and interesting way to do a literature lesson like Anne Frank or Mother's Day is to do a role play. Now if the story is not in the form of a play, students could write their own dialogues for the characters involved. This will allow better understanding of the characters. Abhyas or practice. Practice ensures reinforcement of knowledge acquired. It may be done through group work or project work. For example, 
on completion of a lesson like informal letter, students may be encouraged to write letters to their classmates. This will not only reinforce the concept but also create an environment of fun and affability. Moving on, Prayag or application. Encourage students to begin applying acquired knowledge in everyday life. It will ensure improvement in quality of learning and quality of life. For example, right from the pre-primary stage, once a child learns counting, the child could be encouraged to count out the number of potatoes or onions in the market bag. Doing simple addition or subtraction during a visit to the grocer will also help. Finally, we come to prasar or expansion. The primary aim of gaining knowledge should always be to share it with others. Students must be encouraged to share their acquired knowledge with friends and peers. For example, many schools encourage propagation of knowledge through their social community service. Each one, teach one. Through this endeavor, school going students are inspired to teach some less privileged individuals. The idea is that an educated India will be a better India. To assess the progress of learning of a student, we may refer to the Bloom's taxonomy. So, what is Bloom's taxonomy? Bloom's taxonomy aims to establish a common language among educators for discussing and exchanging methods of teaching and assessment. It helps to evaluate learning at different levels of cognition. As can be seen, the different levels of cognition, that is understanding and reasoning, are understood through this pyramid illustration. In order to comprehend how Bloom's taxonomy allows us to assess the cognition level of our students, let us use an example. Read the comprehension passage provided carefully and answer the questions that follow. This piece is from Swami and his friends by R.K. Narayan. Swami Nathan or Swami to his friends had two different attachments. One to Somu, Shankar and the P, a purely scholastic one, which automatically ceased when the school gates closed. His other attachment was more human to Rajam and Mani. Now that they had no school, they were free from the shackles of time and were almost always together. Swami's one consuming passion in life now was to get a hoop. He dreamt of it night and day. He feasted on visions of an X-cycle wheel without spokes or tire. You had only to press a stick into the groove and the thing would fly. When running, it made a steady hum, which was music to the ear. Swami thought that anybody in Malguri would understand that he was coming even a mile away by that hum. He sometimes kept awake till 10.30 in the night thinking of this hoop. He begged everyone that he came across from his father's friends to a municipal sweeper that he knew to give him a cycle wheel. Now he could not set his eyes on a decent bicycle without his imagination running riot over its wheels. He dreamt one night that he crossed the Sarayu near Nalappa's grove on his wheels. It was a vivid dream. The steel wheel crunched on the sandy bed of the river as it struggled and heaved across. This was fantastic. It nearly maddened him 
to wake up to a hoopless morning. Now we can move to the questions. Question 1. What were Swami's two attachments? What is the purpose of this question? This is a remember or a recall question. The information to this question has already been provided in the passage which the student is expected to read, remember and recall. The expected answer is Swami's two attachments were his two sets of friends. Moving to question 2. How were Swami's friends Somu, Shankar and the P different from Rajam and Mani? This question is based on understanding. The student must comprehend why the two sets of friends were different. So the expected answer here is while Somu, Shankar and the P were Swami's friends at school with whom he shared a scholastic attachment, he shared a warmer relationship with Rajam and Mani. He loved hanging out with Rajam and Mani. Question 3. This is an MCQ question, multiple choice question. The line has been taken from the passage itself. Now, he could not set his eyes on a decent bicycle without his imagination running riot over its wheels. Choose the option that uses the underlined phrase, which means running riot, in the same meaning as the one provided in the extract. Option A, she heard some antisocials planning to run a riot using religious overtones. B, listening to the description of the incident, I wondered if his imagination was running riot. Option C, the city has been running riots in several disjointed pockets. Option D, the overflow of the myriad colors was running a riot on the display counter. Having read the passage, the student is expected to comprehend the sentence structure so that he is able to apply this knowledge in the options provided to choose the appropriate option. And the correct option is option B. Moving to the next question. Choose the option that correctly explains the phrase consuming passion in life. This is also a multiple choice question. And the options are eating passion fruit, emotional upheaval that was derailing his actions, all pervasive thought, anger or rage that was burning him from within. The aim here is that the student must be able to analyze the gathered information from the given passage to choose the best suited option from the choices provided. And the correct option is option C. Moving to question 5. Swami begged everyone to give him a cycle wheel. What do you think was his mental condition at this time? Now, while reading and interpreting the information provided in the passage, the student is expected to evaluate the information to understand the hidden truths. And the answer that we are looking for is desperation. By now, the student must be able to create on his own. So the question number six is make a meaningful sentence with heaved across the phrase taken from the passage. Having comprehended the extract and assimilated both the stated and the implied information, the student must master the skill of utilizing the knowledge to create new sentences and convey ideas on his own. An example of a meaningful sentence would be the heavy mooring rope 
was heaved across the stern of the boat to provide stability to the broken back end. By keeping in mind these few simple principles discussed in this module, I hope your teaching experience will be enjoyable and you will be able to effectively assess the progress of your students. Thank you.